Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, it's going to be a nice, quick, and basic one in which what we're going to do is change the player's speed based upon their health. So, the lower their health gets, the slower they're going to be able to move. Now, this isn't going to be kind of a smooth transition down, it's going to be when they reach a certain health, their speed is going to go down, and I'm going to have multiple increments of this, and you can add as many as you want. This also doesn't include animations, but it would be very, very easy to add them on. The only reason I haven't is because I couldn't find any good ones for free. So again, I'm going to show you how to do it, but I don't actually have any examples in this video. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you'll see right now I have my health at the bottom and we're walking around at a normal speed. If we were to walk into this, get our health down this much, you'll see that we've slowed down ever so slightly. And if we keep doing this even further, you'll see that we're going to slow down even more. Now I believe I only have two different speeds, or three if you include normal speed, so this is the slowest I'll go. Again, you can make this as slow as you want and add as many different increments as well. So you could have had another one between those and you can have another one from here as well. And again, the different animations are very easy to add in. So this is what we're going to make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint, which for me is content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you it's going to be third, first, whatever you've named it. And in here you can see what I've done already is I've just got Event Begin Players creating my widget and adding it to the viewport. And also what I should do is just remove that. But this here is my damage system. So again, I imagine you probably already have that in. If you're watching this video, you should already have a damage system. But if you don't, all I've done is event any damage. The damage of that is just taken away from the health and then just set that as the health with a minimum of zero. So I do have different videos going over stuff like this if you want it, but again I imagine you already have it set up. So what we want to do now is we just want to create a macro. So over on the left here we're going to hit plus macro and I'm going to rename this to check health or check damage, anything like that. And over on the right we're going to add an input, naming this in, and we're going to change it to be an execution pin. Then we're going to add an output, naming this out, also leaving that as an execution pin. Then we're going to add one more input, so a new parameter there and I'm going to name this one to be health or damage, whatever you want, and I'm going to change this to be a float value. We'll compile and save that. I'm just going to move the output out a bit, and what we're going to do is we're doing this in a macro is so we can nice and easily use this wherever we want, really simply, and all we're going to do in here is just basically check the health, and if it's between certain values, we're then going to set the speed according to it. So what we want to do first is we're going to set up our first sort of bracket. So this is going to be for full speed. So we're going to drag out of health and get a greater than, so a float is greater than a float. And I'm going to set this one to be 90. So if the health is above 90, it's going to be walking at normal speed. So I'm going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with that as a condition, and the execution going to in of the macro. Then true, we're going to get our character movement and set the max walk speed. And we're going to set this to our maximum default value basically of walking, which for me is going to be 600. And again, that is going to be connected into the output there. We'll just move this down here. So again, this value here, where I have a 90, is the minimum amount of health the player needs to have in order to be at full speed. I'm now going to set up a second bracket. So what I'm going to do is come out of health and get a float is less than a float, and also get a float is greater than a float. And this is so it has to be between these two values. So I'm going to set this as it has to be less than 90, because obviously this is greater than, that's going to be less than 90, and I want it to also be greater than 50. So if the values are between 50 and 90, it's going to be the second speed. So because I want it to be both less than 90 and greater than 50, we need to use an AND boolean here to make sure that both of these are true, and that is going to go into the condition of a branch like so, with the execution of that branch going to false of the first branch we just had, and I'm going to move this over like so i also move this up a bit like that. So again, if it's less than 90 and more than 50, it's going to go to the next speed, which if we get set max walk speed again from the character movement into true of this second branch, I'm going to set the speed of this to be 300. So that's going to be half of my normal walking speed. And I'm going to set up another bracket just to again give you another example. So what I'm going to do is select the less than, greater than, and branch, and the set max walk speed, and then hit Control C, Control V to copy and paste it down here. The branch is again going to go into false of the previous branch, I'm going to move this up like so. I'm going to get another character movement and connect that into this set max walk speed there. We then also need to make sure we connect up the greater than and less than floats into the health of the input there, and I'm going to change these values. 
so this has to be less than 50 and this one is going to be greater than 20. So now if the player's health is between 20 and 50 it's going to be this other walk speed which I'm going to have as 150, just halving it once again. And also what I should mention is we do need to connect up the set max walk speeds into the out of the output of the macro like so, so we get something like this. So it's going in and going out. So we'll compile and save that. So and again, you can add as many of these on. So I've got three different sections here for a full speed, half speed, and half of that again, but you can add as many as you want. So you could even go down even further than this, but I'm not gonna bother. So again, if the player's health is above 90, it's gonna be full speed. If it's between 50 and 90, it's half of that. And if it's between 20 and 50, it can be half of that again. Again, change these values to what you want, add as many as you want, all that good stuff. I'm going to compile, save that, and we're going to close this macro. Now what we need to do is just use this macro. So we're going to grab out check health, and I'm going to connect this into our damage system. So in goes into set health, and the health is going to go in to our health variable on the macro there. So again, when the player takes damage, which is going to fire off this event any damage here, it's going to set the player's health and then input that into this check health macro, which is then going to change the player's speed accordingly if it needs to based upon these different values. So we'll compile save that once again. Now I'm doing this here when I take damage, you're also going to want to make sure you do this when the player heals and they regain health. So if they then go above this, so if they had 45 and then they heal to be 60, their speed is going to increase back to 300. So make sure you do that as well. Now if we close that, that's the code done. What I'm also going to do is just show you this damage actor here. So for taking damage, it's simply just using an apply damage node, which fires off the event any damage. And also for the animations, you're going to want to open up your animation blend space. Now, if you don't already have one, I'd recommend setting one up, which I do have a video doing. But for me, it's mannequin animations, third person idle run 2D. So again, what this has is it's got the idle, the walk and the run. All you do is just input more animations in these different values. So this value here is about 280. So you could put another animation there and maybe there as well. And these animations can just be walking slower or they could maybe be damaged so the player is limping or anything along those lines really. It's very easy to set up. Just again, I don't have the animations to use. So we're going to close this, hit play and test it out. So if we walk into this, what we can see is if I go down three levels, we're going to go below 90 health because this is doing five each time and now we're walking slower. And if I were to do this again until we get below 50, I believe I set it up as, you'll see that we're gonna go even slower. So you see we're now going even slower like so. So again, that's how I've set it up. I've only got three different speeds really, but again, you can add as many on here as you want. It's very easy. You just keep doing the same process that we have here. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.